Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Aaron with That Church, and today we're starting a new book, the book of James. So I'm jumping on here to read you the introduction before Pastor Steve comes along and we read chapter one. So we're reading the introduction to help us know what we're getting into, okay? So the book of James, which um, I'm reading the introduction out of the Passion Translation, it, the introduction it goes into a lot of things that you'll it'll help you know when you're reading the book of James what he's talking about. So um, it says the Holy Spirit speaks through the Bible. Of course, we know this. We know this. God's holy word. His life-giving expression comes through each verse, and we are changed by receiving the word of God. Do you have ears to hear today to receive his word? I do. The book of James is rich with life-changing revelation, a feast to strengthen you and keep you on course. We thank God that this book is included in our Bibles, for it gives us the understanding of the power of faith to produce good works. Faith works. Actually, this letter is titled Jacob. Have you ever heard that? By calling this book James instead of Jacob, the church loses a vital component of our Jewish beginnings. There is no Jacob, I mean, there's no James in Greek. It's really actually Jacob. We would never say that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and James. <laughs> it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Neither should we call this letter James, when it is in fact the letter of Jacob. Interesting, huh? Most scholars don't believe that he was a believer until after Jesus died and rose again. And you can look more into that in John. John 7, 5. Can you imagine growing up with the Son of God and not knowing it? Yet today, many are able to see the works of Jesus all around them and still remain unconvinced. However, Jacob, or James, did become a powerful voice in the early church as the presiding apostle of the Church of Jerusalem. And like his older brother Jesus, he also was killed for his faith. In A.D. 62, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, it does say that this book was written around A.D. 45 to 47 ish. Okay, <clears throat> the book of James and the book of Galatians are considered to be the first letters penned by the apostles, most likely sometime between A.D. 45 and 47. So when we read this letter, we are reading the earliest insights of the first generation of followers of Jesus who were mostly Jews. James gives us practical truth about what it means to be declared righteous by God. He gives us many clear insights on faith and walking in the truth. You might want to view this book as the New Testament version of Proverbs, for much of his writings speak of God's heavenly wisdom that can transform us. I have fallen in love with Jesus, the author says. And I love his brother James. I think you will too. Now purpose. Although the book of James is a letter, it reads more like a wisdom sermon, addressing a number of crucial topics relevant to Jewish Christians using familiar language of the Old Testament. His letter was similar to so-called diaspora letters from ancient times written to the scattered Jewish people. Diaspora means scattered. So the Jews were scattered into the nations, and this is who it was written to. Like those, it offers comfort and hope during persecution and trials, encourages faithful obedience to God, and provides spiritual instruction and encouragement on important matters relating to the unity and life of the church. And you know, that's relevant to us today too, not just in that time, but there's things we face today that he addresses here. Although debated by some, it is believed that James, who wrote this book, was the half-brother of our Lord Jesus, referred to in Galatians 1.19 and Mark 6.3. This is amazing to think that the actual half-brother of our Lord and Savior gives us truth to live by. We should listen to what James has to say and take it to heart. Given the dominant Jewish flavor of the letter, it appears he originally targeted Jewish Christians. James said, I'm writing to all the 12 tribes of Israel who have been sown as seed among the nations. 
Are you sowing a seed somewhere where God has sent you? I believe some of you are, and, and I know we are, and I believe we're going to grow and flourish. His thoughts were meant to reach out to all the Christians who converted from Judaism, who were scattered throughout the Roman Empire, calling their attention to the fulfillment of the promises for a Messiah in Jesus. Now there are five major themes in the book of James. They are wisdom from above, uh, testing and trials, the law of Moses, faith and good deeds, and then poverty and wealth. So those are the things that we're going to cover as we get into the book of James. So stay tuned. We'll, Pastor Steve and I will be back in a few minutes to read James chapter 1. Have a great day. Bye-bye.